Pokrima Media's Polity Yamtabi Madiba. Joining me today is researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sadna, here to unpack his column titled The Contribution of the UDF and People's Power to Our Understanding of Freedom at Three. You deny that the ANC set up or ran the UDF, but there is clear evidence of the ANC calling for something very similar and the ANC people being involved in the UDF. You know, I was um, in the UDF leadership of the Transvaal, as it then was, but I was simultaneously uh, loyal to and doing what the ANC wanted. And there were very many others who... Uh, were part of the UDF, but they were working for insurrection. What we did, we saw as hopefully working towards the overthrow of the apartheid regime. But that didn't mean that the UDF was not something distinct in its own rights. When we acted illegally, that was something invisible. But when we were doing our UDF activities, we followed the law, except when we had a defiance campaign or something like that. And when I was detained, I was very concerned to tell them that I broke no law. Now, the previous time when I was in jail, I couldn't deny that I had broken laws. But in the UDF, we felt it was very important to protect the legal space that the UDF had and to advance it, use that space to advance democracy. Now, a lot of the UDF people were only doing UDF stuff and were not involved in the ANC. Insofar as we did try to advance the ANC's ideas, this didn't mean that the UDF became the ANC. If you talk about um, people's power in Kraft, Renet, or Udenhay, how these people carried out people's power was not through direct instructions by the ANC in Lusaka, nor even by the head office of the, of the UDF, because the conditions of the particular townships determined what their priorities were, what they needed to do. For example, in Port Alfred, they turned the Bunter administration building after kicking them out into a crash. Uh, so there were a lot of things happening which could only be done by the people on the ground in those areas. So the ANC was the loyalty of someone like myself, but it wasn't in contradiction with my loyalty to a legally operating set of organizations falling under the UDF. Also, you criticized Governor Mbeki for saying the ANC was behind the mass uprising, but it is not a very thin line between calling for ungovernability and people's power, also the UDF people implementing it on the ground. What was done by the ANC leadership in Lusaka, the people on Robben Island were not able to exercise that direct, immediate influence. But what they did was a very accurate reading of what was required. And it got more and more accurate because there was closer contact between them and people inside the country. But if you want to implement something, you can't just make the call on Freedom Radio. They have to listen to the call, interpret the call, and then ask themselves, How do we make ungovernability where we are here? How do we kick these people out? When it comes to people's power, what do you do? And it was not from Lusaka or from a UDF headquarters that street committees were decided on, ward committees and other local level structures. There was not a decision that it's best to have uh, street committees, not as UDF only, but representing the whole community. That's in line with how the ANC would have wanted it, but they didn't spell it out. People worked out what would work best where they were, and also what projects 
like there were not recreational facilities in townships and they made people's parks. There was conflict. The police had been kicked out or sometimes the police said, go to the comrades. And they had to try to find ways of making it possible for those in conflict to live together. Now, sometimes it didn't work uh, because when all the old, older people and the leaders were arrested, the youth uh, were left behind and the youth were more impetuous than older people, less, less patient in building structures. And then there was more violence and necklaces, which we didn't advocate. So what I'm saying is, yes, we did carry out what the ANC had in mind. But as Oliver Tambo said, we wanted the people to form their own organizations. We didn't specify that they must set up the UDF, but the UDF and other formations coincided with the broad rise of democratic organizations that we wanted to see emerge. And that is the case. There was uh, this link, but it wasn't formal. So when I was in detention, for example, they couldn't charge me because I didn't break the law as far as they was visible to them. Um, and we try to keep, but if we were working illegally, not everyone was working illegally, but if we were, we try to keep it right out of the UDF uh, structures. And lastly, Raymond, you surely create confusion when you nevertheless say that many UDF people saw themselves as acting in support of the ANC. I think it is seemingly in contradiction to say we are in a legal organization, which is the UDF, but by night we would do UDF things, but we would also do illegal things. But they they didn't blur. We kept that space because you must remember that the UDF was not set up as an insurrection organization. We had to protect that legality, even if it meant dancing or jiving around uh, to avoid uh, breaking the law. We had to ensure that they had no cause to close down the UDF as a legal space. ANC was an illegal space. If some of us were involved in the illegal space as well, we had to be very sure that we didn't wear UDF t-shirts if we went and did something illegal. And we did try that our best and some, and I think many of us succeeded. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Krima Media's polity about the contribution of the UDF and people's power to our understanding of freedom at three.